Hello, my name is Lou Fiore. I'm an oncologist at the VA Boston Healthcare System and the Executive Director of the Massachusetts Veterans Epidemiology Research and Information Center, an intramural VA research organization. I'm presenting a video abstract for you of an article entitled, The VA Point of Care Precision Oncology Program. The Precision Oncology Program in the VA consists of both a clinical and a research component. Patients who are newly diagnosed with cancer, and we're starting with lung cancer, are given the opportunity of having their tumor sequenced. The mutations that are identified by tumor sequencing are returned to their clinician in the medical record and made available for their care. In addition, we provide a consultative service such that if clinicians aren't exactly sure what to do, they can get some help. Finally, the program provides opportunities for patients to participate in clinical trials of emerging therapies that are relevant to their particular cancer based on their, muta uh, on their mutation status. The research component of the program starts when patients sign informed consent to allow us to access their medical records and create a data repository, and then to use this data repository to generate both generalizable knowledge as well as knowledge specific for their own care. We also ask patients if we can harvest their residual tissue and make that available for research purposes as well. The program started a few months ago and it began in the uh, New England region uh, and is now available for national rollout. The article describes the program in some detail and talks about the five objectives. Those are, very briefly, to assure access to precision oncology to all veterans across the country regardless of where they are. The second is to remove disparities that are due to what type of medical center a veteran goes to, be it a large medical center near an academic uh, environment or whether a more rural setting. The same care is provided to any patient. So geographical disparities are reduced or eliminated. The third objective is to create the knowledge base and hopefully we can mine that knowledge base to identify what best to do for the patient in front of us. So for example, if a patient sitting in front of us has a particular mutation profile, we can identify other veterans across the country who have a similar mutation profile. Maybe we can learn from how they did to help dictate what to do for the veteran sitting in front of us. Finally, the knowledge base can be used, as I said earlier, to generate findings of general interest, generalizable knowledge suitable for publication, which is the fourth objective, the dissemination of generalizable knowledge. And the last is, again, being able to put patients on clinical trials and help alleviate the bottleneck to clinical trials that currently exists because of the difficulty in identifying patients who match inclusion criteria, particularly if the inclusion criteria contain a specific mutation, which are present in just a small percentage of all patients. That's what the article is about. The, the uh, views in the article represent the views of myself and my co-authors and not necessarily that of the uh, federal government. I hope you enjoy reading it. Thank you for your attention.